Good evening, everyone. Uh, yes, hi, 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 Dr. Marcy. Hi, Jacob. Jacob, you gotta tell me which Swahili words you've been able to pick. Don't just tell me you have learned Swahili. What have you learned? Um, Gertrude, good evening. Uh, Gertrude Jerutu, how are you? Uh, we have who? Mark Jason, good evening. Um, Margaret Kioni, good evening. And uh, Jacqueline Kamau, how are you? Uh, Rosemary Atemo, how are you? I haven't seen you around in a while. By the way, Rosemary, our dear. Thank you very much for joining us and a happy, happy uh, Utamaduni Day to all Kenyans and uh, Ugandans. Thank you, or, or rather, happy belated um, Independence Day, uh, which was yesterday. And uh, yeah, so we are, we are very honored and happy to have you guys tonight. I'm very, very excited to be here. Um, I'm looking forward to the conversation we are going to have. And uh, 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 before we start on, of course, my name is Grace Nzula, otherwise known as Moderator of Choice. And you are tuned in to Get It Right with Atara Solutions. This is a webinar series that seeks to demystify issues in employment and entrepreneurship. We have been doing this for the last, uh, since 2020. Uh, we started in June 2020, then we did July, or rather 2021, 2022, and 2023. Uh, we've been fortunate enough for the last two years, we've actually run the sessions from January to November. And uh, this time we have done the same, so we are very, very grateful. And it's the same with the heart of gratitude that we continue to do this. And of course, uh, happy Mental Health Day. Today, 10th of October is also Mental Health Day. And uh, uh, we, have, we did uh, taking care of the HR the other day, but uh, we'll see whether we can organize a mental health session before we end. But I'm very excited about the sessions we are lined up for you for the next couple of weeks. It's going to be really, really amazing. So before we get into the topic of the day, I know today uh, somebody asked me, Grace, are you teaching people to have brain drain from East Africa? And I said, no, because we still need representation everywhere. And I mean, we are 55 million Kenyans. I'm yet to discover, Jacob, how many are you in Uganda? Uh, I, I am not too sure, but yes, uh, tonight we're just gonna learn that there has been e incidences uh, that also prompted to us having this conversation tonight. So before we get to it, uh, like I said, you're tuned in to get it right with the Tara Solutions. And of course, I'm your host, Grace Nzula, of course, with my co-host, Kevin Adipo, who is uh, enjoying his Utamaduni day. He has done three sessions by himself, so he was like, hey, today I'll come back at some point. And then we have, of course, our sign language interpreter, Catherine Sidandi. Catherine, I know it's a holiday. I know you wanted to go and enjoy some biryani, but thank you for being here with us and uh, we keep impacting, we keep growing the world. So before we embark, allow me to give a shout out to our partners uh, who support us in making sure that these sessions are running. Uh, we are very, very fortunate and uh, our speaker today is actually one of our partners and uh, we are looking forward to learning from you. Um, no, this laptop has changed. All right, so uh, our first partner is Stallion Construction Company Limited. St Stallion Construction, just one second, okay. Yeah, there we are. I was looking for the full slideshow. Right, so we have Stallion Construction Company Limited. Stallion Construction, like the name spells it, is a construction company. If you're looking to renovate your house or your office, you've just moved to a bigger or smaller office and you wish for somebody to come and subdivide, if you're looking to replace your tiles, if you're looking for anything to do with construction, build a house or uh, change something around your house or your office, then Stallion Construction Company Limited are your people. We have Pathway Solution Services. Pathway Solution Services are a HR and training company. If you're looking to become, uh, to train uh, on several um, uh, uh, soft skills among uh, human resource uh, skills, 
they have quite quite a number of sessions that you can log on to their website their trainings are logged into their lms lms is learning management system so and they offer certificates at the end and they for get it right with the Tara Solutions uh, followers, they actually give you at discounted rates. And all this can be found on their website, Pathway Solution Services. Please log in, see the sessions, and see whether you can book one or two uh, uh, um, uh, training uh, packages for yourself. And then uh, you can also let me know. And then I link you up with Frank, who is our speaker tonight, and he'll be able to set your account. And you can be able to learn at the comfort of your office, your home your bedroom, anywhere, uh, because you log into the system and you get to learn, take your own notes slowly as, as uh, within the time limits given. And then we have um, Vanessa Training Institute. Vanessa Training Institute is a carpentry school. If you know somebody who is interested in becoming a, a woodworker or just understanding how woodworking da uh, uh, goes, then you know Vanessa is one of the best furniture makers we have in this world. Uh, actually, there's no one who makes fun uh, furniture like Vanessa in the whole of uh, Eastern Central Africa. So uh, their training institute is one of the best, actually, because they really do focus on your skills. We have WeClean. WeClean is a carpet, a carpet cleaning company and also a cleaning company. Please do not stay with a dirty carpet at home because you do not know have time to remove it. Uh, so long as they have access to your home, they'll come and remove the carpet for themselves. And then when they bring back, they'll also, also lay it out for you. Don't stay with dirty carpet, uh, curtains as well. They clean. And then they also clean sofas. They come at the comfort of your home. They'll clean your sofa. And the weather right now is really good because they're drying quite fast. So you don't have to worry. And then they pick up, they drop off uh, for your carpets. Uh, the sofas are cleaned at the comfort uh, in your home. And the, and. Uh, <clears throat> They actually do an amazing, amazing job. And then we have Suluhu Mediation Center. If you want to become a certified mediator, then you need to come and join Suluhu Mediation Center. I'm, I'm, I, I speak about them because I'm a certified mediator and I did my training with Suluhu Mediation. And one thing that sets them apart is every week, every Wednesday, after you're done with your certification, you can log in into a session where they practice and mentor you to grow into becoming a better mediator because it is a skill that takes time and, uh, and requires you to, uh, to build over a period of time. And then you have Profiles International. Profiles International, I like to refer them to the people. People, I know they are... Uh, their, their slogan is uh, molding culture. Uh, if you want to become a Juno certified emotional intelligence coach, by the way, that is actually another line of, uh, of learning that you ought to have. Uh, if you're looking to grow into leadership, then you need to up your game on emotional intelligence and also become a coach to others on matters emotional intelligence. Uh, Profiles International of, also offer psychometric assessments. They also support you in building trust amongst your team. They do quite a lot when it comes to molding a culture. And then we have Kapula Mintito. Kapula Mintito are, uh, are specialists in uh, cost of goods. They sell cashew nuts. They sell Simos gel. They also sell uh, Mabuyu. They have the, one of the best tasting Mabuyus I've ever had. They have quite a lot uh, when it comes to coastal snacks. You can check them out on Instagram or Facebook, and you can get in touch with me, and I'll be able to link you up with them. We also have El Samea. El Samea is a hotel located in Naivasha. It is that time of the year when you're getting tired. Uh, birthdays are coming. By the way, it's my birthday month. My birthday is uh, next week. So if you wish to just take time alone to go and reflect, you want to go to a quiet place, a place with um, uh, a, a very beautiful ambience, you ought to go to El Samea. It's in Naivasha. You can do a day trip if you don't wish to spend the night, or you can just go and spend the night and just enjoy. There's a room I love that is directly facing the lake. So you wake up in the morning and your first thing you see is the lake and it's such a beautiful place. And their tea and cakes are just out of this world. I can tell you that for a fact. <clears throat> and they have a museum. So if you are around Naivasha and you just have a couple of hours you want to I don't know what to do with yourself, then you need to. Or just focus. Leave Nairobi and go to El Samea purposely. Or your boyfriends and girlfriends, wives and uh, etc, etc. Then you need to take yourself via Chama groups and all that. We have Steadfast Quality Solutions. Steadfast Quality Solutions is a PR that is public relations and human resource consulting company in Uganda. 
Uh, this is headed by our partner, uh, Herbert Zake. Thank you, Herbert, for sharing our flyers in Kampala, Uganda. And thank you for your partnership. Thank you for also referring some speakers to us. We really, really are growing better because of collaboration with you. So if you're in this call and you're looking for consultants in Uganda, then you need to get in touch with State, State First Quality Solutions Limited. And of course, my favorite time of the year is here. We are announcing the end of year meet and greet for Get It Right to the Tara Solutions. Normally, we are here throughout the year. We meet uh, on Zoom. And then once a year to end our year, we normally have a physical meet and greet. And this time, it's not going to be a cocktail. This time, it's going to be a dinner. So uh, please save the date. It is going to be on Friday, 24th of November. Friday, 24th of November at 5 o'clock, we are going to meet at Weston Hotel. Last day we were in Weston, to, uh, this time we're also going back to Weston. Uh, it's accessible and their food is actually really good. And of course, as always, our dress code is an African touch. So it's time to get in touch with your uh, tailor or just get, figure out where your African uh, touch is. If you have not worn your African uh, wear in a while, then it's time to check into your wardrobes and... Uh, show up it's gonna be fun it's gonna be lit and we are going to learn uh we have an awesome awesome guest speaker lined up and then we are still putting together the whole team and everything but please save the date this is going to be the event of the year uh and you know we, we you know at our solutions we we never go down on in terms of your takeaways so make sure you save the date and see you on friday 24th november at western hotel in nairobi all right, so, and uh, thank you very much. Oh, Rose Wangari, 24th is your birthday. Please come. We can get you cake for sure, for sure, for sure. And uh, right, so on matters get it right this evening, we have none other than Frank Pambare, who is uh, based in the UK. He has been there for over 20 years, and he's, there to, he's here to share with us uh, what are the do's and the don'ts how do we know or what are the strategies that you need to employ to get a job abroad quick, pretty, pretty fast? And then, um, of course, we, we are going to live here with a lot of, uh, uh, we must get it right, you know, when we go for this. And uh, yes, 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 yes. Um, so at this point in time, I will allow Kevin to introduce himself. Kevin, I can see you. I'm not too sure you want to, uh, you're ready to go and introduce yourself. And then we... We, we allow Frank. We cannot hear you, Kevin, or is it me? Kevin, you can go. I didn't hear you. You're on mute. I'm fine. Oh, you don't have a voice. Okay, fine. Sour, sour, sour. No problem. Not a problem. So thank you very much, Kevin. Kevin is, our, uh, is a co-host of Get It Right to the Tara Solutions, and he's going to be the MC at Get It Right to the Tara Solutions meet and greet. So please come. If you're not coming to see Grace or Lan, just come and see Kevin then. And of course, Catherine Sindandi will be in the house. So it's going to be lit. I'm not too sure, Frank, you're coming from UK to meet and greet. You'll tell us. But tell us, Frank, how do we make sure that we are getting it right when it comes to uh, applying for jobs um, abroad? Frank, we can't hear you. You're on mute. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, loud and clear. Okay, right, let me put this back again. So my name is uh, Frank Wabali. I'm CHRMP Advanced Practitioner. And I'm also a certified coach with so many hats that I do wear. And I also uh, work for other people as employment advisor. And I'm a certified career advisor. So as I talk about this, I have a lot that I'll be telling you more about how to avoid being scammed. Uh, because there are so many scammers uh, trying to milk you left and right. Uh, some of you, you remember that uh, um, I think it was last year when I spoke about uh, um, working abroad is not a bed of roses. 
I would encourage each and every person who is attending this uh, meeting, please go and listen and listen it again and again, because I tried to um, discuss as much as possible what you need to be aware of before even you think about learning in the foreign world. Apart from what some of you uh, have seen in the media um, through Lynn Goge about um, what is happening in Canada, just uh, this weekend, last weekend, um, because I'm a chair of a Kenyan group, um, one of the Kenyan groups in the UK, we just received a very, very uh, sorrowful story about the Kenyans living in London and uh, surrounding that some of them now are sleeping in the street simply because uh, of a number of things. Number one, cost of living. Number two, some of them came with high expectations and they were not told the whole truth. And now they are finding they cannot afford to pay for the rent. They cannot be able to afford food. So some of them, they have to depend on uh, free food uh, in the places where the homeless are given food. And the reason why um, uh, I was contacted among many other chairmen in UK is because uh, we have this forum for County 48, all the dias for us in, um, in UK who are chairmen for various groups. Uh, we normally meet and discuss and support uh, people who may be going through, through problems. So some of them, they need some hosting and some of them, they need professional food and all this kind of thing. So before you move abroad, uh, please be careful. Do a bit of research. Think twice before you leave home. Um, to bring in context, uh, many countries all over the world that do allow foreigners to work abroad, they normally have the labor shortage. And in the labor shortage, in their website, through their home office, the, or the foreign office, they will describe and clearly state yeah, the, the requirement, what they need, what skills they are looking for, what qualifications and what type of people and how long those people can come and work in that particular foreign land. For example, in UK, we have the, main, uh, the home office. Home office has a list of uh, labor uh, skills shortage, and they have listed all the jobs that, that they need people to come and work. For example, the doctors, the nurses, uh, the scientists, people with computer science, and occasionally sometimes the seasonal uh, staff to come and work in the, in the farms because they recruit quite a lot. So you need to be careful to establish whether the jobs you're going for, they are on shortage in that particular country and whether the information about those jobs is uh, credible or not. It is a doubtful task when you decide you have to leave your country and move abroad. And therefore, whatever you hear and, 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 and see and people uh, kind of uh, trying to impress you, showing you a bed of roses, or you see uh, diasporas uh, coming back in the country, buying Porsche cars, uh, buying big estates, and all that kind of thing. That does not happen in a single day. There's a lot of working hard that is involved. But at the same time, moving to the foreign land is not exactly what you hear and see. There's so much that you don't. And uh, uh, once I finish this slide, uh, we'll be taking a lot of your questions and I'll be able to answer as much as I can. So before you board Kenya Airways uh, to go to the country that you are planning, think twice. Think before you jump because not everything that greets us is good. Different countries have different challenges and they follow from one country to another. Not only the issue of weather or even languages, uh, but there are other challenges. Some of the countries that are good to, uh, to move into is like UK and uh, US uh, because they are English speaking country and they have less handles. Of course, even Australia is an English country, but it also has its own challenges. Different countries have their own challenges. But uh, when we deal with the question and answers, I will be more prescriptive. I would like you to put on the chat, uh, if you have applied job abroad, 
Uh, what was your experience? Did you get the job or did you not? Was it through the agency? Were you scammed? Uh, please put in the chat and uh, we'll be able to uh, sample some of your feedback and Mark, we'll I be did. able. I, I set up the survey. Oh, okay, you did. Okay, that's fine. That's yes. fine. Okay, we'll yeah. sample later on. Thank you. Okay. Um, so um, I would rough, um, uh, we watch this clip. Um, um, working uh, in Canada, whether it's a trap and stop, um, but I will only re let's just listen the one for stop complaining about Canada. And then you hear what uh, is happening so that you get the real story because it's not an, an easy thing as people think. So um, once it opens, this was Rini Goge just four days ago. these refugees. Now, while that bickering continues back and forth, left in the middle are those folks. Those folks are more tough. What keeps you going every single day? What keeps you hope? Hope. They hope I add when I left. Anyway. But it appears that people are not even doing their research when it comes to going to Canada because any job can pass, you know? So let me just play you this one last clip from this person here so that we are able to understand. Let me just play you so that we are able to understand or pick. Um, anyway, you, you have uh, seen it for yourself. Just watch uh, Lynn Goge uh, in the YouTube. You find um, two YouTubes. Is moving to Canada a trap? and stop complaining about Canada. Your visa, uh, your visa cannot guarantee you the job. This is where I want to start. Whenever you decide you are going to move abroad, understand that the visas, they come with the different requirements, irrespective of the country you go. And you have to respect the visa requirement. And I know we are talking about winning strategies, but I want to say that be careful when you decide to move abroad, you need to understand the visa requirement and what it entails. Because if you watch that uh, YouTube, you find so many homeless uh, Kenyans who are in the Canada in the street. Uh, we also have in, in, in UK also some Kenyans, some or even as students, they have not been able to, uh, to be able to live in the student accommodation or even uh, be able to uh, afford the rent because, because it's so expensive. Think about this. In Radan, a, a single room is 364 pound per week. That is about 64,999. Call it 65,000 per week, Kenya shillings. It is very, very expensive. But because some of the people, they do not do the research, they end up going to Radan, but they could go to other cities in UK that they could be able to afford the rent for 400 pound uh, per month. And uh, they get a, a two bedroomed house, but then they go into expensive city and then the cost is too much and they cannot afford. So anyway, research about uh, the, the visa that uh, you are applying. So, why do you want to work abroad? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Why are the foreign, uh, why foreign countries advertise the jobs? As I said, part of the reason is because their jobs are favorable, but they cannot be filled by the local people. Simply because their skills lacking. For example, in UK, we have a lot of jobs for nurses and the doctors and the people who can work in cybersecurity and computer science. And during the summer, the artists to come and entertain people. And there are also people to work in the farms. So you need to understand which jobs are available and, and then you apply for them. And when you are given the visa, respect those rules. Immigration controls, they apply. And also you need to think about the country you are going because uh, of the language barriers. Those who are moving to Saudi Arabia and Arabian countries, they need to speak to at least to have basic Arabic language because it's the language being used. If somebody is moving to China, the Chinese language is being used. So do your own research. Where are you planning to, to go? 
have you done your own search? Have you established that the job is real? Because many of the jobs that are being advertised, they are not real and you need to be very, very careful. Unfortunately, some of the people, according to what we are reading in the social media that are going in some of the Asian countries, they are just going there and their bodies are being used to harvest organs uh, to take to hospitals which are buying uh, those organs. You can't imagine your relative going to work in a country. You are told it's a real job, but somebody else is waiting to get that person for organ harvesting. That's not great at all. So part of the winning strategy, you need to research the recruitment agency. I was talking to one of my friends who lives there, and he told me about this agency that is based in Gara. He just went there, he registered. The next thing they were saying, he need to pay about 4,500 for medical. But hold on, this, they have not given even the job and they are asking uh, to pay 4,500 for medical. You need to be careful and to think twice before even you pay any money to that agency that is showing you they have the jobs. Let them show you the real job Let, and they give you in writing, go and confirm. Uh, and there are various ways that you can confirm, including confirming with the diplomatic mission. The embassy of that particular country, you could also confirm with the people that are living in that country where this person is saying their jobs. You need to check their website if their jobs are available, as they are saying. Double check with the, uh, depending on your country, um, which, uh, because I know we are represented in different countries. In Kenya, we have the Ministry for Home Affairs, uh, I mean, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and also we have the, uh, the Ministry for Internal Affairs and Immigration. Confirm whether those jobs are real. Confirm whether they are aware about it. Double check. Confirm with the people that uh, you know they are living there. One good exam, one credit that can be accredited with um, the current government in Kenya is um, the creation of the, uh, the State Department for Diaspora. So all of um, uh, the world now, we have what we are calling Diaspora 48 or County 48. So all the chairmen of different, different countries, we have one WhatsApp group. And therefore, every information that may come in, somebody wants to be sure whether this is happening, whether there are jobs in that particular country, I'll post immediately in that forum that we have. And the chairman of that particular country will tell me whether it's real or not real. So try to confirm with the people living in that particular country. Avoid falling into the scam. So how do we avoid the scams? Let me first uh, ask Grace to sample some of the feedback on the question that I had asked before. You're on mute. I do not seem to find the, I can see Paul, but I'm not seeing survey and I set it up on the survey. So, okay, uh, we'll move, move on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. We'll move on. Um, <laughs> So basically, the first thing, as I said, you need to research on, the, on, the, on, the, on those jobs. Check in the government website, your government where you are located. Check in the, uh, in the recruitment agency to establish which company they are recruiting for. Make sure they tell you which company they are recruiting for. Then go to that company's website. Try to search the information. Go to the social media. Try to... Uh, understand about that um, particular company or that recruitment agency is what people have said. Go to the YouTube, read more about that particular company. Still as part of the winning strategy, make sure you have the skills and the qualities required. For example, I did say about UK, they are recruiting a lot of nurses, they are recruiting a lot of carers, health and social care people to work in the care homes because the, since COVID-19, uh, there's a lot of shortage of carers and they are paying very, very well. I know quite a number of uh, Kenyans who, uh, who came during COVID-19 and some of them are earning up to 4,000 grad uh, UK power because they work continuously without um, taking holidays um, and uh, off days because they know they are here for uh, a limited time according to the visa requirement. So 
anyway, the point is establish the skills that are required and qualities, qualifications and the qualities. If you do not have, then you what you can do, take a bit of time, uh, gain the qualification, then after that you apply. Or if not, talk to some of us that are in foreign countries, we could tell you what you can do. For example, those who are looking for health and social care, there's a lot of trainings that you can do online and you get that qualification uh, before you apply even for the visa or even before you register with the agency because the agency will end up charging so much money. If you are a nurse, make sure you are registered with the Nursing Association in Kenya, the professional body. And, um, and also make sure you get a professional person to do your CV. Before I came to UK, my uh, CV was done professionally by a retired uh, American who was living in Kenya. And that CV, it has helped me even up to this day. As much as the work I'm doing now, I make CVs for people and many other things I do. But I was, uh, my CV was done professionally by an expatriate who, was, who had retired in Kenya and who knew how to make the CVs for the people living um, for the uh, UK market, which I was looking for. So it's very good to have a CV done properly and professionally. Of course, I proud the CV in the job sites uh, and, um, and basically do not give the bank details at all. Even when they say you must put these details, do not agree because uh, somebody will be out um, to see for your money that you have. We ask ourselves, what is the intention? Why do you want to come and work, work in a foreign land? Uh, are the jobs, uh, if the, the job you want to do is available uh, in your local country, can you be able to do it there? Or do you want to go to foreign land because you want to make money? Of course, we need money, but then make sure that you meet the requirement of that particular job and make sure that the job you're going for can be authenticated by a government department. I'll be letting you know, especially those who are living in Kenya, that the government of Kenya has ways of authenticating it. And those who um, uh, advertise the jobs, which are not real jobs, they can go into prison um, um, uh, six years according to section uh, 86. And I'll be letting you know very shortly. If you are going to get a job, uh, that you want to go for, they, you must have employment contract that is clearly written. It must be verifiable. It must be signed by both parties. It must be in a company letterhead and address and telephone, not the one made in Liverwood. You need to make sure that it's something that can be on the ticketed. Uh, let me give an example uh, of what happened to me when I was still in UK. Just immediately I was finishing my master's, I got a job in Dubai uh, that they were paying about 1.5 million US dollars per month. And that job looked very, very good. It had all these features that I'm talking about. But then I decided, let me ask one of my professor who was working in Dubai, whether he knows about the company. And then he sent that job to somebody living in Dubai and ask the person, can you confirm whether this company is existing or not? To my amazement, that company was not an existing company. All what they had done is to use the letterhead of another company, they should post the details to look real, but when the addresses uh, of the company were located, that company was not existing. So there are some companies that can be real, but uh, the, somebody is using their details, but the address and the telephone is for a different place so that they see from people's money. And in that particular job, they had told me that I needed to pay initially 500 pound, which they had said is registration. And then after that, they needed a uh, thousand pound for processing the visa. But because of how much money they had promised, I was almost tempted to do that. When the deal is so good, think twice. So the job needs to be authenticated by the embassy of the host country or the local embassy where you're located. It must be advertised in a company website. There should be no ambiguity in the contract. And also don't make any payment upfront. 
without knowing wh what you're paying for. Recruitment agencies, yes, they can charge for the administration cost, admin cost and all that kind of thing, but you do not pay for all these admin costs without properly authenticating what you are paying for. Now, in the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection in Kenya, and you can go to the, the, the website, uh, they have said they have a labor officer who is located, uh, who can do attestation. He attests the job that somebody got in a foreign land to make sure that that job is proper. And in fact, in the Ministry of Labor, it lists so many things. There must be a consent between the person who is going to, um, who is applying for that job. That person must have um, uh, agreed that is going to move to that country. That job must have been confirmed. There must be employment of uh, uh, employment contract existing. There are so many, many things mentioned in the Ministry of Labor uh, in Kenya. And those who are in Uganda or Tanzania or any other country where you are, you need to check your Ministry of Labor what they have said. But also in the Ministry of Labor in Kenya, it also says that if you advertise that particular job or if a, do if a job is dodgy, somebody is advertising something that is not Leo, but is just planning uh, you know, to take advantage of um, vulnerable Kenyans, somebody can be charged in the court of law where you pay 200,000 or you can be jailed or both penalties, uh, both jail and the money. And this is at the section 86 of the Employment Act 2007 of the Constitution of Kenya. Although for me, in my own opinion, the amount of money they have put is too little, considering how much these recruitment agencies end up charging people and they end up uh, going uh, scotch free. Uh, anyway, you know, uh, at least before you get another job, check with the labor officer in the Ministry of Labor. But don't rely on one source because you never know how collusion can take. Check with the embassy, check with the foreign uh, labor, um, labor ministry, check with the foreign affairs. If you can also contact the, the county for TH chairman of that country. And if you don't know, uh, contact me. I'll, I'll be able to get the chairman of the country where you are going and then we'll be able to pretest. Don't take chances. Under the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection, they have this uh, BU, I'm sure you are aware about it, which started nine months ago, and they, they are calling for public to participate in terms of um, uh, contributing towards labor migration management BU. They have been in UK, uh, in UK, in US, and many countries in um, uh, foreign countries where they have asked us to give the feedback concerning the BU. But because it has not been made law currently, I would really, really encourage the human resources uh, practitioners uh, and the Kenyans that are in this um, call, please make sure you get in touch with the PS in the State Department and the minister concerned, give your opinion. If you cannot be able to get hold of them, make sure you hold, uh, get hold of your MP to make sure that you give your comment concerning this bill. Because there ought to be very punitive measures put in place for the recruitment agencies and the employers who are dodgy, who are using the opportunities of vulnerable people uh, to cheat them. It should be prevent this from happening. So give your contribution to your ministry and uh, your MP. Now, I want to show you something. Uh, and, I, and I came to realize as I was preparing for this presentation, the reason why in Canada in particular, why people have been cheated so much. It is because when you go to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Diaspora in Kenya, they have advertised so many jobs, hundreds and hundreds of jobs. But the Minister of Labor have put a disclaimer that they, they do not, um, uh, they, they, they cannot confirm with authentication that those jobs are, are existing or not existing. They have put a disclaimer. But the only problem is they have put those jobs, but they have not, uh, and they have put the source of those jobs 
but they have not put the measures in place to protect the, the, the vulnerable Kenyans who are going to apply. Because what happens in any good job or anything that happens good, there'll be always some people who will come and, um, and try to come up with their own ways of using that to their own advantage. Let me show you this job so that um, you don't say that I'm saying about something which is not there. I've already opened here, so you can see for yourself, all these jobs, they are advertised in the, in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and there are so, so many. Um, there are three spreadsheets you can see for yourself, uh, and these jobs are based in Canada. Then I show you some others, they are there, you can see for yourself, there are so, so many of them. You can see others, they are there, they are provided even the websites, you can see for yourself. You can see there all those uh, jobs advertised abroad. Uh, I can only see. I don't know whether I'm the only one, but I can only see you. You have not moved your screen. Um, uh, yeah, I need to share. So, sorry, I, I yeah. need to share the screen. Uh, my apologies. Let, let me share the screen so that you are able to see. Th thank you for for uh, sharing with me. Mm -hmm. So you can see that. I hope you can see that. So those, those, those particular jobs, they are based in, in Canada and they have been advertised in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And there are so, so many, so many, many jobs. You see that? You see that? Those are so many, many jobs. I have four screens and I want to share all of them for your own eyes, you see, um, so that you see for yourself, this is something that is already um, available in the, in the country where you are. Um, let me uh, give me one minute. I open another, an, another one, another screen. Um, so let me move there. Um, um, can, can, you see, uh, can you see those ones in News Brun, Brun, Brunswick? It's still uh, loading. Uh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yes, we so can see senior accountant, yes. facilities cleaner, yes. after school program team leader, yes. your care center looking for HR analytics, executive assistant, resident attendant. Yeah. So, Kevin, <laughs> human, <laughs> human resources analytics. Uh, yeah. You can Nelson, see those, those job, ones yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, somebody wants a barber, mm -hmm. carpenter. I teach carpenters. Oh, okay, uh, so you can go for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. and then and then you can see that one as well. And then uh, uh, I want to show you um, another another screen. Uh, give me one minute. I share th this screen as well. You see, you see those ones again. Um, they, they are also um, they are also advertised there in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. You can see for yourself. I am in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. That's where I've got those jobs. So it's not me advertising. Uh, again, you see these ones. They are looking for Bakerley uh, um, Life Skills Coach shift manager, lamp, better living, uh, home care, and, and, um, and they, they also have uh, some others here. You, you can see for yourself, they are all advertised um, in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So many, many jobs. So, but the moral of the story, even if they are advertised by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, personally, um, I would say be careful before you, you pay any fee to anybody. Because these jobs, there they, they are many characters that, um, there are so many characters that can end up uh, taking advantage of you without knowing. Of course, the ministry have given a disclaimer they have said that um, 
they, they cannot uh, confirm um, whether those, uh, about those jobs, them they have only given a disclaimer there. So, um, so we, to avoid the scam, uh, uh, we are saying research the jobs, make sure that you can confirm with the labor officer in the Ministry of Labor in the country where you are, confirm uh, with, with other agencies as well, confirm with the people that you know that are living in that country and uh, make sure you have a contract that is verifiable and do not pay unless you have authenticated everything. Um, so think about it before you think about moving to another country. Now, in terms of immigration, um, before you move to another country or even before the agency tries to tell you this or the other, first of, of course, you need to have a passport from your country. You need to have work permit. If the agency cannot or the company recruiting cannot process the work permit for you, then you have to be careful. And uh, employment, income, employment contract must be there before the work permit is produced. Terms of contract, read them very carefully. Of course, confirm with the foreign diplomatic mission, as I said, each country, um, if and if, uh, let me use example of Kenya. Kenya has uh, embassy or in most parts of the, of, of the world, confirm with the ambassador or the commercial attaches in those countries before you decide to, uh, to leave your country. Uh, in terms of respecting um, um, the visa, let me say this. You, uh, you need to understand what type of visa you have been given and for what reason. And do not be in a rush to leave your country unless you understand that. And you understand even where the job is located and who is going to be waiting for you when you move to the country that you are going. Um, so this, now, um, let me talk about the types of visas that you can be given by the embassy. Now, number one, uh, not the, the embassy, but yeah, the embassy of that particular country. They, are, they fall into five categories. Number one is the visitor's visa. Visitor visa is time bound. If it's the case of UK, it will be six months. Some countries, it will be three months. Some countries, it is not exp uh, you cannot extend once that period is over. But some countries, it can be expanded. The visitor visa comes with certain conditions that you cannot work. But some countries, they can allow you to do limited uh, jobs that are favorable uh, at a shortage of labor but within that particular period. If you come with a student visa, and I give an example in UK, you are only allowed to work 20 hours per week during the term time when the university is on. Then during the summer, you are allowed to work as many hours as possible. And many countries, they are like that. If you go as a student, you can only work limited hours as per the visa requirement. But during the summer, or when the, the summer we mean when it's hot and when the universities, they cross and schools cross, mainly uh, between May, uh, I mean, uh, uh, June to August and some places it's uh, July and August, that time you can work. Medical visa, if you come on a medical visa, you have to respect the conditions of the visa. So some people, they, they will bring their relative abroad, but because themselves, they are not sick, they go and start working. But when you break the visa conditions, you are likely to be deported. In the case of UK, if you break the loose, you cannot be allowed to come back until 10 years are over. So you have to be very careful. You could get a diplomatic visa if you're working for the embassy, and then again, follow the conditions for that. But the one that uh, really mo most of us would like to have is the work permit visa. The work permit visa is the one that allows you to work, but it also comes with the conditions. In most cases, you have to work for the employer that invited you to that particular country. If you start working to another employer, then the employer has a duty to report you to the home office of that particular country. And then what will happen, you'll be deported back or the visa can be canceled. 
Sometimes uh, some, you can get another employer who is willing to pay the visa and, and also pay for exit uh, fee, which you can pay to the employer who allowed you to come to that particular country. Normally, lead terms and conditions before you decide what you have to do. Tips for moving to a foreign land once you have confirmed the job and you have confirmed everything. And I repeat, visa, uh, visitor's visa is not for working. It's intended as a tourist visa. And once you get to that country, then you go back. I know many people uh, that were moving to Canada or, or, were, uh, or have moved to different countries and they have received a lot of shock. I want to give you two examples. One person, um, um, uh, I do not want to name the county, uh, but he came from Kenya and he was going to Canada and that was one year ago and he landed in Heathrow. Now, what happened was the person who was supposed to wait for him so that he, he, he go with him, accompany him to Canada was not there. So what happened? He was arrested. And then from there, the home office here, they put him into a room where he stayed for 48 hours alone, and they were doing a lot of interviews. And then finally, when uh, they could not confirm very well uh, uh, about um, the story he was giving, and because people, when they come in the foreign land, especially if they are going on visitor's visa, some of the people they are told, the when you ride there, just throw your passport to the toilet and then uh, just go and wait for somebody will be waiting for you. And then what would happen is that the person will be arrested. He doesn't have the documents of returning the, the, uh, him back to the country where he, he was going, where he was coming from, and he doesn't have the documents to take to the country where he was going as well. So what would happen is that person will be detained and then will be uh, kept by the police. For this case, this person somehow, um, his God helped him in, in the sense that um, after 48 hours, because they could not return him, he was uh, kept in a hotel and he was kept there for six months. And then after that, they moved him another place. But because the law here has changed, so if one year the UK government has not made the decision about somebody, then they automatically have to give you a work permit. And that's how he got the work permit. And now he's settled and is working. Another one was going to Canada, then, then reaching Toronto. Then the, the person who was supposed to host him was not there and was not picking the phones. So, and of course, when you come to the foreign land, you cannot access what is called public recourse FAD. That means the public FADs. So the person ended up staying in the street. So when you decide you're moving, get the letters and the emails of the, the employer or the recruiter or the volunteering organization have given, print those emails and also save them in iCloud. Know the full address and the postcode because each and every uh, uh, part of the foreign land, they identify them with the postcode and the addresses. They make sure that when you say that you're going to live in a particular address, it's a place they can go and confirm whether it's real. They even have the telephone number they will call the person to confirm whether this has been agreed. Have the Google map even for the place where you're going. Keep constant communication with your family and friend. And if you're going for religious organization, make sure that you also get the contacts with them. Keep in touch with the country and host country and also keep in touch with your family members that you have left back. And if you can, keep in touch with County 48 chairman of that particular county where you are going so that if you get in problems, that person can help you. Be careful about relationship dating. Some people, they are cheating other people online. And once you are in that country, you'll be taken for uh, organ harvesting and uh, you, you do not want to go there. So research about the country you are going. So briefly, how do you adapt in a foreign land? You have to respect the laws, the laws of, uh, of that country and the people you find in that country. Of course, respect the visa laws, as I said, 
make sure you are paying the taxes because if you don't, they can deport you and make sure that um, you stay in the address where you said that you're going to come and live and be aware you will not be given medical. In fact, in UK, if you're coming as a student or you're coming as on work permit, you have to pay 400 pound for your medical insurance. So bear that in mind. And driving, you will not be allowed to drive unless you are trained. And most cases, work permits are not being renewed, even those who are coming as nurses and doctors and pharmacists, you come for five years, three years, then renew two years, then allowed to go back, then one year again, you apply and you come back. So be careful with the association of the people you're gonna associate yourself with them when you come, because some people can use you for other things. Like for example, some um, females or, uh, or women are being invited to work as domestic workers, but when they land here or they land to the country where they are going, they are used to work in massage parlors. And that's not why you left your job in Kenya uh, or Uganda or Tanzania or country to come and work and do uh, those jobs. I'm not saying the people who work in those places are bad, but be careful what job you are coming to do. Because sometimes you can lower your dignity in such a way that you regret why did I leave the country of origin. Obviously, make sure that before you send the job offer, consult and also check with the embassies. Also make sure you have a SIM card that you can contact people and have the WhatsApp because WhatsApp can help you uh, and all that kind of thing. So I would have liked we watch this, but I want you to go and watch it in the internet. Uh, this is freedom, uh, sound of freedom. Uh, there's a lot of traders for this music. But one thing uh, you see, there's a film that you can watch as well. But one thing that keeps coming up in that trader, God's child are not for sale. God's child are not for sale. So uh, watch it and you'll know what is happening. Uh, in. Uh, it has been acted by people who have done a lot of research on how foreigners and migrants are being used by Doji people. Obviously, working in a challenge lad, you uh, in a foreign lad, it is a place where you have to work long hours if you have to make the ads meet. As I said, like the, in London, you have to pay 365 per week for a single room. And that is about 64,000 grad, it's a lot of money. Uh, so obviously, even if you come here, people would not like you to come and depend on them. They would like you to work. And so people, they work day and night, and most, most of the time, loneliness and is a big issue. And uh, therefore, before you come, try um, to upscale your skills, have several trainings, uh, several qualifications that can enable you to wear different hats. If you come, one job gets finished, you can move to another job uh, fairly quickly without a problem. Of course, I would like you to watch what I said in the beginning, uh, that working abroad is not a bed of losses. Uh, it's there in the, YouTube, in the Atala Solutions, uh, which is another talk that I, I did last year. Support mechanism. Make sure that if you come abroad, uh, you join uh, uh, the county association in that particular country where you come, there will always be a Kenyan association, Ugandan association, Tanzania association, Canadian association. Join the associations of people of your country because they can help you and support you. Also look for county 48 chairman of the county that, that uh, you'll be living because different regions all of uh, UK, US, everywhere, they have the different counties, including even in uh, Canada, they have Murwa as one of the county 48 and they have many others. Of course, join, join the social media, uh, join the religious groups, register with the embassy or the mission in that country. Uh, also register with the gym because there's a lot of loneliness in this country. And also you, if you are swedled and you have rather in, uh, in these foreign countries, contact the Citizen Advice Bureau or Christian Aid Against Poverty for they can help you. And in case you're a student, join the student union. Uh, Nielsen Madeira said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change your world. Get educated, 
uh, get the knowledge and it will help you. At Pathway Solutions, uh, we offer e-learning uh, trainings uh, through uh, instructor-led or, or LMS training. And we also offer coaching and mentoring. And uh, we also train people uh, physically and virtually uh, if we get some people uh, who uh, want um, our services. In case you're sourcing an university abroad, uh, you can talk to me. Uh, I can tell you more about UK uh, because I know universities which are recruiting and in uh, more cheaper counties rather than London because London is so expensive or, or not going to go there. Uh, so working abroad, think before you jump. So uh, offer to you, uh, Grace, now, uh, and then I'll be able to handle the questions now. All right, Frank, uh, thank you very much for that elaborate uh, presentation. There are a number of questions of people asking, how do we get in touch with County 48? Uh, each and every um, country um, that you are going to go, if you tell me which country you are going, I'll be able to uh, get hold of County 48 of that particular country you are going. But bear in mind, like for example, in UK, we are more than uh, 30 people uh, that are chairman for different, different counties because uh, you, United Kingdom has so many counties. So if you are going to Scotland, tell me you are going to Scotland. If you are going to Radan, tell me it's Radan. If you are going to Leeds, le tell me it's in Leeds. Then I'll get the chairman of that country. If you tell me it's Toronto, then uh, let me know, and then I'll get in touch with Murua or another chairman who can be able to guide you accordingly. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, can I get a PhD scholarship in UK, and how should I go about it? The straight answer is you need to go to the website called Common, Commonwealth Scholarship. You need to register and express your interest. But one of the things they like is you need to have applied an university in UK or, or any country within the Commonwealth, uh, whether it's Australia or wh whichever country you want to go as long as it's a Commonwealth country, including Canada. Then once you go to that website, you express your interest. Then what will happen uh, every time before September, they normally announce uh, scholarships and then you apply and you are going, to, you, may, you may get, and if, and if you do not get some of the universities, they, they can also give some scholarships. Okay, and then there's a question from Uganda. Uh, is there an agency like Skills Across Borders in Uganda that takes health and social care workers in UK? Health and social care is for everyone. It's not a Kenyan thing. Um, uh, of course, the Kenyan government signed a protocol about the nurses uh, with UK government, but health and social care is any country. You can apply for those jobs and you can get them. But my where, advice... Where, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where, where do they apply from? Because you talked about Kenyans being able to go to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Where do, where, what can Ugandans do? Um, the, the health and social care, most of those jobs are in a website called NHS which is National Hospital uh, Services in UK. So if you go to NHS website, you can be able to apply the job. I know one particular guy called David, uh, just among many other people. Uh, he just applied the directory on the website. Then because he had the nursing skills that they required, they were able to contact him. And then he signed an agreement that he, he is going to come and work for that uh, employer is the the main hospital that supply the hospital services is a government body all over uk that is going to work for five years without leaving the job and if he leaves he has to pay three thousand pound uh, back so anybody and everybody can apply jobs there okay uh frank what did you mean to have the your presentation about your contact details on the screen yeah yeah that's fine because that's not what is there Oh, sorry, it's not showing. Uh, no. Okay, it's be, it's because of the background I have. Anyway, because uh -huh. I'll be sending because I'll be sending this presentation to you. Uh, that, that that that's fine. I'll be able to uh, to okay. share this presentation with you. There's a question on which visa allows one to work while studying in a foreign country. Um, two visas allow the student visa 
it uh, do allow people to work, but uh, be, be, depending on which country you are going, and I'll give an example with UK because that's where I'm based. As a student, you are allowed to work 20 hours. Then during the summertime, which is July or August, you'll be able to work um, maximum hours. Whether you want to do 48, whether you want to do 60, whether you want to do 72, there's so, so, much, uh, so many hours you can do, and there's a lot of money. And what you only need to do is do not become choosy. When you come here, for example, uh, in most places, the factory jobs and care jobs are the ones which are available, and the local people do not want to do those jobs. So if you go and work in a care, you can even get what is called um, uh, leafing, um, care leafing, where you, you stay in uh, somebody's house, you be cooking for that person, you provide personal care, you take that person uh, for shopping, and you'll be getting about 700 quid, 700 pound uh, per month, which is just like, um, I think it's maybe, uh, let me do a quick calculation here, um, and, and I'll tell you. So, um, so 700 um, uh, pound, if you change with 177, uh, um, that is 123,000 uh, you earn per week. Uh, but that's where you live with that particular person. Uh, but apart from those who live, you can get uh, the job you'll be commuting uh, to work for that person. If you're working for flower factory or bakery uh, company, they will be paying you 10 pound 42. Every, in the good thing with UK, uh, for example, the minimum wage is ten pound forty two, but in many companies they pay more than that. If you multiply that by exchange rate, so you'll be getting one hour one thousand eight hundred and forty four. Call it nineteen hundred per hour. That's what you earn. So if you decide to do forty hours um, uh, per week, that means you'll be earning about seventy three thousand seven hundred and seventy seven. Call them seventy four thousand. So there's a lot of money, but there's uh, a lot of uh, studying and working a lot of hours and odd hours, but not with the standing that the weather sometimes is very, very bad because of snow and weed and rain and all that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, there's a comment here that says there are countries like Turkey and UAE. It is almost impossible to get a work visa while you're in Kenya. You must go there and tarmac. And... Uh, and, and uh, where? Uh, you must go there and tarmac. Countries encourage that. When you apply for a job, example, in UAE, they give you two days notice for interview. Uh, means employer expects you. Um, where have I lost that one now? Employer expects you. Mm -hmm. uh, just one second. Two days notice. Employer expects you uh, to be in the country. Uh, already tamaking. So, yeah. Um, what is the best path? What is the best path to find a career in UAE um, as a university graduate in tech? I, I'm not too sure Frank can answer UAE questions. Maybe, uh, Monica, you can answer the UAE question or you have answers for that. I, I can answer briefly, uh, any jobs related on tech, they are, they are on demand everywhere in the world. But when you are thinking about UAE, especially as a professional, you need to have at least basic Arabic language. And they will clearly state that in the job description, because you majority of the people you'll be working for they, they speak Arabic language, but there are also a lot of Americans and British companies working in uh, Dubai, and uh, they do employ quite a lot of people who are professional. Even Kuwait and all these countries, there's a lot of uh, jobs going on. But within that issue of short notice that somebody expects you in two days, you have to be careful. Be very careful. Why do they want to give you a very short notice? Some things uh, may not be right. No, he, she said it's because they're expecting you to be in that particular country. No, they don't expect mm -hmm. that you're shipping from, from, from another country. Uh, there's another question here mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. where he's saying, I'm a student and I want to go uh, to abroad immediately. Uh, is it a must get experience? 
Um, sorry, repeat the question as a student. Did you say a student? Somebody is a student, but they want to move as soon as they graduate. Will it work or do they need to have some experience from the home country? Uh, it depends with the degree. Uh, for example, I know somebody from um, uh, Kenya. Uh, he was in Moy University and he did uh, BSc. And uh, after that, he came and did masters. In fact, we were in the same university together. And immediately he finished because the law changed um, um, three years ago, allowing graduates who come to do science-oriented uh, subjects uh, that they can uh, work and study. Um, uh, they are allowed two years after they graduate. In fact, even most of the degrees nowadays, they, somebody, uh, once you finish your degree, especially master's, you are allowed to work for two years to gain work experience. And then after that, you go back to the country of, of, of origin, but sometimes the companies can keep them. This guy did a, a job before he finished two years. He got a job with Microsoft uh, as a country director in Kenya, but he decided to not to take the job because if you stay in UK after, um, uh, after 10 years, then you become a citizen if you came through work permit. But if you came through settlement or a family, then after five years, you become a citizen. So to answer your, your, your question, it's not a must that he must have experience. He can apply for masters. Then once he is finished, when, once he is doing the masters, he can apply the, the jobs locally. He starts doing uh, those jobs. Then after two years of finishing the masters, the masters is one year, but you require the dissertation time. Uh, during that time, he can get a job and get the work experience. All right, and uh, there have been, okay, so maybe I can take these two, two final questions before we close. And allow me to remind you that this session is brought to you by Atara Solutions in partnership with Profiles International. Uh, we also are in partnership with Pathways Solution Services, Service Solutions. Uh, there's a question here from uh, um, uh, Gertrude, or not from Gertrude. Uh, Kevin, Kevin Obo, uh, Frank has said the scholarships open in September. Uh, Gertrude is asking, how is the job security in the in overseas, and how are the expenses as well? Uh, job security, it, it depends with which company you work for. For example, um, because as I've said in the past, I share my time with my company and I share uh, time with, with another company I work for. The company I'm working for, it has given me a security for four years, guaranteed four years. Um, so some companies will give you guaranteed time uh, depending on the, whether they are government funded, uh, whether they are private limited and they have a big contract to, to supply the goods and services. So it depends, but the secret, what I can always say, because for me, I speak from, from the experience. Before you move to any particular uh, country, even before I moved to UK, I made sure that I have a lot of qualifications that will enable me to maneuver aloud because I've done the research about the jobs available. And even now that I'm here in UK, I continue doing more qualifications, more qualifications, so that when the one job ends, I'm moving to, to another one. Uh, to make sure that um, uh, I'm secure. So uh, the jobs, are, some of the jobs are not secure because the agencies will recruit you for a period of time. Then after that, they add that job so that you apply again and then you pay their fee. Um, but the good thing, there's so many, many jobs, especially uh, two types of jobs, three types of jobs so that I can be specific to what you have answered. Care jobs, they will never finish because there are so many, many people working in care uh, or people needing uh, care uh, in, in all these uh, developed countries. Number two, if you're working for factory jobs, they will never add because even if you move from one factory, you can move to another one and those jobs will still be available. If you're working as a nurse or a doctor, pharmacist though, uh, or science oriented, those jobs never add because they are always emerging new companies. But some of the jobs, uh, see, and teaching jobs, teaching jobs, they are available. Uh, the developed countries, they are looking for science teachers, math teacher, English teachers, 
those types of jobs there is open ended. Okay. And Frank, uh, the last question that has been asked by over 10 people uh, mm -hmm. is about remote jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, some people don't want to travel, but they want to work remotely. Um, so how, how do they go about it? That one I've always wanted Grace to tell you to set up one because there are so many opportunities. You do not need to travel abroad to make money. You can set a call center to handle the call centers uh, in any country of, um, of your choice, and especially a country like UK or US or Canada, because it is cheaper for them if they outsource. You only need to come up with a light mechanism, light policies, procedures, and everything, data protection in place, insurance, and other things, and then you'll be able to, have a, um, uh, to outsource some of these jobs. But even apart from that, there's those who have teaching qualification. There's a lot of jobs available to teach remotely. You only need, you need to go to a website called Indeed, indeed.com. Indeed is in different countries, but uh, you can type indeed.com. And then you need to register yourself, express that you would like to teach or to work remotely, and you find where the jobs are. There's a lot of jobs available uh, to work remotely. So, some of them, they ask certain conditions, but is doable. Okay, and Virginia is saying, how do I get these care jobs? I tried NHS, but I got regrets. Um, give her my email, uh, and then um, and then I can be able to advise her what she can do. Actually, every, there's somebody on the call who is saying as well that you need to share your contacts. Maybe you can type it out as we 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 do the news what we need to do right so um i hope this this session has been quite helpful uh for you to get we will upload the recording on our youtube channel i have shared the link please subscribe to the youtube channel and also don't forget to ring a bell uh leave us a comment as well uh we will be happy to 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 have you uh pio molo i have seen your question on canada uk and usa I think all those countries, it just depends on what you want to do and you can move to any. They all have the same things. Uh, you will suffer discrimination or other, some sort of um, racism, even if it's underwater. I, I find them the same. I don't know what you think about that question, Frank. Yeah, yeah, th th that is true. Uh, as long as you have different color uh, from the local people, even even my, myself, and, um, and I'm a citizen in this uh, country, I still experience uh, the same racism. The only thing, is the magnitude of it is very low. For example, um, on my paid employment, I work in a company with 160. And, uh, and in particular office where I, where I work, we are about 25. I'm the only black person there. And bear in mind, I work as an employment advisor. So for me to be able to succeed in that particular job, I must stand out and I must remain professional and I must remain non-biased, non-political and, uh, and I use the appropriate language at all, at all particular time. So whether somebody wants to do other things like say, for example, um, let me give you a personal bias, I mean, I mean biasness that happens in most of these offices. Somebody can bring tea to everyone and then it will leave you there. And you're working with, 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 with everyone in the office. Whenever it is the time uh, you decide to do something for, for everyone, you do for everyone. But when somebody comes, will pass you and then go to the other people. Or sometimes you may find that the associations are being done in a way that you are being alienated at some point. But for me, it doesn't bother me. I know what I'm doing and why I'm here. So racism happens, biasness, unconscious biasness, uh, conscious and unconscious biasness happens, but you need to bear in mind you have gone to the foreign land, you have gone to their country and therefore respect them. And uh, when, well, if you become discriminated, the rules in the land, in any country you go, they are very, very strong. You can go to 
you can report it to the police or you can report to the chairman of equality commission they have so many bodies that you can report to and including even those county 48 i was talking to they can help you to know how to maneuver out okay all right i think frank at this rate we're just gonna be here um forever so uh, uh frank has shared his email address i've also put that there uh, and uh, of course, Beatrice Kibet says, you better mention my name. So Beatrice, I recognize your presence in this webinar, <laughs> and I hope that you can get your, 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 your online jobs that you're searching. And uh, Frank has shared with you a lot of information. I hope that that is quite informative for you. And I, I hope that you can now go and achieve your dreams. I mean, we cannot all be in Kenya. We cannot all be abroad. So we diversity of, of our resources is very important. And by resources, I mean our skills. So it is okay to, to go away uh, for, for, for study. So thank you very much for joining us. Uh, please uh, join our WhatsApp group. I've shared the link. And I can share that again. Uh, have you seen Frank's email address? If you do not see it, you can always get in touch with me and I will be able to give it to you. Of course, uh, if you want to listen, to, you joined us later and you want to listen to this, please do so. Uh, I am going to recopy our YouTube channel as well uh, so that then and, you're able and, to and, join us. Mm -hmm. And Grace, um, I'm going to share this presentation uh, to you. It will have my contact as well. And uh, for those um, require LMS training, um, uh, uh, I'll be able to give 10 people, uh, whichever 10 people Grace will choose, uh, they can go to my website. You go at the LMS training, choose any course of your choice, and I'll be able to give you for free uh, at no cost to you. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Frank, for that offer. I've seen a number of Ugandans, so we're going to do three from Uganda, three from Tanzania, uh, three from Kenya. And if you're from a foreign country that we have not mentioned, then please uh, do get in touch with me. And that's the catch. Join our WhatsApp group. You'll find my number there. I know most of you have my number, but yeah, find my number there. Get in touch with me. It's fast come, fast served. If you're three from Kenya, you'll get the training. If you're... Um, uh yeah uh who is this uh habat habat hyomu hendu or whatever hyomu hyomu hendo habat uh yes you need to get in touch with me so the catch is to join the whatsapp group you'll find my number there and uh, you can always get in touch with me and i'll be able to link you up with frank for 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 that uh but hey, and you guys are fast. My WhatsApp is already uh, uh, beeping. But I uh, know you have just said hi. You have not said anything. It's just going to be fast come, fast sad, served. And it's only three people from Kenya, three people from Tanzania, and three people from, uh, from, from, from Kampala. Or rather, from Ken Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. I know, th I know that is represented here. So I'm, I'm sorry, you cannot write training here. Uh, yeah, Julia from Angola. So you ought to join our, Kevin, you want to repost our WhatsApp group? Please join our WhatsApp group. You'll find my number and you get in touch with me on my number and uh, I will be able to now uh, link you up with Frank. The lady from Angola, please uh, come, 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 come. Uh, at least you get a free pass for that one. There's our WhatsApp group. Get in touch with me. Yeah, I am on WhatsApp and uh, yeah. Yeah, my number is on our WhatsApp group. Join there and you'll see it. So thank you very much. And, and <laughs> yes. Grace, uh, one more thing. So, sorry for keeping coming back. Um, tell your audience they can go to the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Kenya because, uh, for those jobs that uh, I, I did job on. They need to see and contact the ministry and confirm whether those jobs are still available because there are more than 200 jobs advertised there. But as I said, the Ministry of Labor says that you must contact the labor officer to authenticate uh, if you get a job uh, that you are, you have been invited to work abroad. The last question is, is it a must for me to do an IELTS test for me to get admission for master's in USA? I have a degree in BSc Microbiology. IELTS is not uh, US, it's UK. Uh, in US, they do what they call TOEFL. 
talking English as a foreign language or GMT for the graduates. Uh, and for UK, if you are graduate and you got a degree taught in English, it's not necessarily a must as long as the degree can be confirmed. Okay, and I wish to confirm that the Kenyans, uh, your three people have already gotten in touch with me. So if you're a Kenyan and you haven't, please just, this is just it. Uh, sorry, uh, that, that, that is done. Uh, so it was three positions for Kenyans and I have three. I've seen a fourth one, but unfortunately we only have three positions. So uh, make sure that uh, next time you act very fast. So at this point in time, we can't be here all night and uh, we need to rest. Tomorrow is a working day. So at this point in time, allow me to say thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Frank, for your input. Thank you for shedding more light. And uh, we are better informed and we will be very careful uh, before we jump. So... And uh, yes, you can go to our uh, to our WhatsApp group and uh, Kevin, you'll deal with whatever is happening on the chat. Uh, so uh, you can go to our YouTube channel. You can f find the session we did with Frank a while back on uh, Think Before You Jump. That is for, for, for those who want to go abroad and uh, there's more information there. Of course, there's a lot of content on our WhatsApp, on our YouTube channel, my friend. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of content there. So please go take advantage, become a better human being, become a better employer and become a better employee. We are all in this together. So at this point in time, my name is Grace Nzula, of course, with a... Uh, 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 my co-host, that is uh, Kevin Adipo and Catherine Sidandi, our sign language interpreter. And of course, our guest for this evening, Frank Pombari. Uh, he runs a Pathway Service Solutions. So thank you so, so much for your input, Frank. We are really, 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 really grateful for your partnership and also for your willingness to join us in the quest to change the world through information. We really, really appreciate. And to you, our audience, we cannot do this without you. Really, really thank you, thank you, thank you. And I hope that the information you have can also be shared with other people and so that then we can create a better world for all of us. Thank you so much. Next week, we're here discussing book publishing. Uh, we want to bring in a publisher. We want to uh, bring in somebody who can take us through more details uh, as a build-up on the last one that we had. And then as we look forward to November, November is Diabetes Awareness Month. So we are going to have a session on diabetes as we keep uh, on uh, making our safer workplaces for both employers and employees so thank you so much please join our whatsapp group for more information and uh, we shall see you you here next week tuesday same time as we discuss uh, book publishing thank you very much and have yourselves a lovely lovely night thank you <laughs>